What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Wolverine issue number 26. This brand new story arc is the Beast Agenda. It looks like we might finally start to really explore what Beast has become. All his scheming, all his manipulation, everything that he has done. It looks like Wolverine is finally starting to take notice. He is getting sick and tired of everything going on. This is going to shake up not only Wolverine Beast but also X-Force. Now make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so this issue of Wolverine, it opens us up to some amazing artwork. Just absolutely beautiful. And we get some inner dialogue from Wolverine, letting us know that when he goes into a fight, he goes someplace else. This is a red hot nowhere. He is even barely aware of himself. But then every now and then, something brings him down to reality. In the midst of a battle, it can be something as simple as a butterfly flying over. When you are caught up in all the craziness, sometimes it becomes normal. It's easy to forget that the rest of the world even exists. The butterflies keep flying. The bakers keep baking. In a way, this is kind of grounding for Wolverine. If your attention is focused constantly on world-shaking events. You can get blinded to the world itself. Sometimes everything real, it just feels so far away. That is where we pick up with Jeff Bannister. For those that remember, this is pretty much one of Wolverine's only real friends outside of mutant kind. Now, don't get me wrong, he's got other friends, but this is the one that he spends time with. And once upon a time, he had been a CIA field operative. These days, he sits behind a desk, and that is because he is a father. He is a a single father, which means he can't be out there risking his life day in and day out. But a part of him, it really does miss the rush of being in the field. That adrenaline kicking in, the thrill of combat, being on the brink of death. These days, the most exciting part of his lunch is usually going down and sitting having some kind of food. Walking through the park, this is where he meets a woman that looks a lot like his ex-wife or his dead wife. On this day, the two of them, they have a conversation. They sit, they chat, it's nothing real serious, but she did leave something behind. That is what takes us to the next day. Him and Wolverine sitting down, just having a good time in the backyard. The young girl playing in the swimming pool, it's just an average, regular day. A very boring day. Something that Wolverine, he probably needs a lot more of. But while the two sit here and they conversate about missing the old days, or at least Jeff is missing the old days, this is when Beast chimes in and lets Wolverine Wolverine know that he is needed back at the point. Before he takes off, Wolverine does give Jeff's daughter a, a more or less a key to Krakoa, having the finger of Wade Wilson, telling her to keep it in the freezer, and if she is ever needing Wolverine, this finger will allow her to get into the gateway. That is where we see X-Force currently in Madripoor, and they are battling against Iraqi pirates. Things have gotten much worse in this area. Ever Ever since Araco and all the Iraqi people were more or less let loose, the Iraqi pirates have made Madripoor their safe haven. Their mission is to kill as many of the pirates as possible and then destroy the ship. Black Tom has cooked up a mold that will more or less disperse everything. It will render the cove uninhabitable. But this is when Beast lets us know that these pirates, they haven't done anything yet. His algorithm is telling them that they are going to make an attack. At least it is probable that they will make an attack on their trade routes. Beast would like to end this problem before it ever becomes a problem. This is where everything stops. The Shadow Room being built back up. That is exactly where they are. They are in the Shadow Room. And Wolverine, he has paused everything. Because what Beast just said, that is extremely dangerous grounds to walk in. You are talking about an algorithm that predicts if people are are going to commit crimes or not. This is very Westworld. For those that watch the show, it's honestly one of my favorite shows. But in Westworld, there is a computer algorithm that really determines what people are going to be in life, what decisions they're going to make, how they are going to make them, what path they are going to go. It predicts this off of probability. The problem when you are using algorithms and probability is that these people were never given the choice. That is what everything comes down to. 
That is what it means to be a human being, to be sentient life. You always have the choice to make the right decision. Sometimes you don't make the right one. Sometimes you make the bad decisions. But what they are doing, what Beast is doing, is taking away free will. He is taking away the choice for people to decide if they are going to do something or if they are not going to do something. That he is making them guilty before a crime is ever committed just because his algorithm says so. Wolverine knows that if they attack the Iraqi pirates, unprovoked, without reason, just because of an algorithm, this will ensure that they attack back. This will ensure that they causes some kind of battle. That it creates new enemies for absolutely no reason at all. This is where Wolverine, he's kind of done. He walks out of the Shadow Room completely ignoring Beast. With Beast telling him not to walk away from him. That he is warning him. Now, Jeff had reached out to Wolverine, letting him know that Legacy House is back to doing what it does. The same organization that was auctioning off the arm of Wolverine. It appears that they are back in the open at the Smithsonian Castle in Washington, D.C. They are operating right under the radar, right under everybody's noses. With Jeff reaching out to Wolverine, the two of them sneak in, making their way into some kind of little arena. It doesn't take long for Wolverine to recognize they are not alone. And in an instant, we see a gun to Jeff's head, recognizing that he probably screwed up. The woman he met in a park, that was no woman at all. This was the merchant. Using a holographic image inducer, he had tricked Jeff into bringing Wolverine here. He knew that Jeff wouldn't be able to resist investigating further. He knew that he was friends with Wolverine. As they put adamantium cuffs on Wolverine, the spotlight goes up. All of the seats begin filling up because tonight is a special auction. Today, they are going to create all of their own auctioning items. We see the merchant take his gun and he puts it right to Wolverine's head with blood spattering everywhere. The merchant goes over to him with a pocket knife and he opens up him. He opens up Wolverine and digs that bullet out. That is the first thing going up for auction. A 45 caliber bullet dug out of Wolverine's body. But that is just the beginning. From his ear to locks of hair, Jeff completely helpless watching his friend being butchered alive. If Wolverine even tried something, Jeff would get a bullet in the head. And so he sits here helpless while the merchant just pulls him apart piece by piece. That's when the next bidder steps forward, liking to propose a bid because anything goes tonight. Our individual steps up and he would like to know how much it would cost to be the one who killed Wolverine. The bidder just so happens to be Beast. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, I am hoping that this is finally exposing Beast for the monster that he has become. He has gone under the radar. He has been doing sketchy things for such a long time. It has been completely thrown off to the side for so long. But I think we have finally reached that breaking point where Wolverine, he has had enough of, of what Beast does. I mean, creating algorithms to take down criminals that haven't even committed a crime yet. Now, Beast could be here for two reasons. He could be here because he legitimately wants to rescue Wolverine and that could easily be the direction that they go. Or he could be here just to flaunt his power over Beast or over Wolverine to show him that you don't have any true power. That I could easily kill you right now. I could pay to kill you and there is nothing that you could do about it. That he could fight against Wolverine's resurrection to take Wolverine off the board so Beast could go and do what he does uninterrupted. With tons of possibilities, I hope, I hope that this is finally seeing the downfall of Beast. No matter what the outcome, I am glad that we are finally focusing on him. Because he has been working in the back like a freaking shadow government. Like a deep seed of the CIA, he has been sitting here manipulating, twisting things, just doing whatever he wants, completely unchecked. And if mutant kind wants to succeed, if they want to be seen as the nation they are, Beast cannot be allowed to continue to do everything that he has been doing, even if he believes that what he does is for the greater good. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with this series, be sure to check out the link in my description.
description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership, much like Patreon having five different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to getting free comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.